Hello, hi to those who are joining. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today, lunchtime. We have some excellent um, advice to share with you, um, support, and uh, we have two experts here to answer questions. We are welcomed uh, by Dr. Nardo, Professor Nardo, apologies, um, and also um, the CEO of Leaf and Founder, um, which is the most fantastic app, uh, which is really revolutionizing uh, care and support and also AI um, to assist people when they're in their fertility journey. Um, and they'll go on to explain, uh, Jan will go on to explain more about this. So we're talking today about tools available to shorten the time to pregnancy um, and help people on their fertility journey, uh, whether that's assisted or not. Um, so, um, I'm Eloise, I'm the CEO and founder of Fertility Help Hub, uh, which is an online uh, global platform to support people who are looking for advice and experts um, and community on their fertility journey um, and I would like to first of all uh, pass over to Professor uh, Nardo who is uh, speaking with us today from the medical side of things so welcome Luciano. Thank you very much indeed Eloise and uh, good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining and um, it is a very great pleasure for me to be here today and um, together with Jan, to discuss with you the ins and outs of uh, um, personalized care. I am a consultant, uh, obstetrician and gynecologist and a fertility specialist, um, and I work predominantly in the United Kingdom. And my interest is to offer patients uh, effective, innovative and patient-centered care. Hence why working with uh, LEAF on, uh, um, on a new project uh, aiming to shorten the time to pregnancy. Fantastic. And also Jan, um, who is CEO and founder of LEAF, please could you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you develop such a, a wonderful app? So good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Jan. I always thank you very much for inviting us here. So uh, it all started with um, uh, my experience uh, with uh, uh, going through the IVF because uh, my son is from IVF and it was a painful journey for us. Uh, it took us almost two years and 12 failed cycles to conceive. So that was the beginning of uh, my interest in IVF. And since I, since I was working for IBM at that time, I could see that uh, AI can uh, support physicians and patients uh, in uh, choosing the most appropriate personalized uh, treatment approach to uh, solve the fertility issues. And this is why I um, set up uh, LEAF. Now I need to tell that uh, my background is technology and AI. So all the medical questions uh, uh, should go to Professor Nardo. And if there are questions about AI, which I will actually start with to, to, to give some introduction what AI is and how does AI help. So those questions then could go to me. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Olga is also um, a, a member of the LEAF team, um, so she can also answer questions. I'm not sure whether she's on the panel today, but um, feel free, as I said before, to follow up with myself or the team, um, direct your questions over to us and, and we can support you. So um, over to you, Jan, just to explain a bit more about uh, LEAF. So thank you, hello. So uh, what is AI? That's the question that we are getting sometimes uh, from uh, patients uh, and uh, also general, generally, you know, public. So we need to start with the fact that we all use AI already. Anytime when we use Google Translate or we use robotic vacuum cleaner at home or Siri or Alexa, that's AI behind it, right? Then, of course, there are more sophisticated applications like uh, self-driving cars, uh, which uh, are now being uh, tested in the United States and some, some somewhere also in Europe. So, so AI has been already in with us uh, in, the, in the normal life. Now, what is that? AI is uh, mathematical and statistical methods uh, which uh, are allowing computers to determine what are the relationships and patterns within the data. That means that in terms of programming software, we as humans do not have to program every step of every step of the software for the computer. The AI can actually identify those steps and relations 
uh, for itself. So that's the major, the biggest difference, right? Now, uh, when we speak about medicine, the importance of AI has been has been rising for a couple of years, maybe three or four years. After the initial skepticism, which uh, was uh, in terms of uh, abilities of AI to to produce uh, a meaningful results. Now, why is that uh, rise now? First of all, there is an enormous amount of data being available uh, through uh, wearables, through mobile applications uh, and other means. Then the computational power has been multiplicated every year. So these two things together actually allow technological advances in AI. But so what's more important, I think, is that patients and the users are uh, getting more and more um, uh, accustomed to use uh, digital uh, tools and the phone is not for making calls primarily and sending WhatsApp messages, but there are also applications that are very useful. So patients are demanding uh, digital services. And also amongst clinicians uh, and clinics that are increasing competition, which results in uh, uh, clinics uh, looking for new ways how to improve treatment. So these are the four major, major driving forces. Now, AI is here to support patient and clinician. There is no way, at least for now, that AI can replace clinician. We always say that it's doctor or physician plus AI that gets better results for patients. So that's in a nutshell what AI is. Of course, if anybody has a question, please raise your hand or, or share the questions and I can address it later on. So if we can move to the next slide, AI in uh, fertility. What do we see here? It seems to be a very complicated uh, picture. So I'll take you through it uh, to make it simple. So you can see on the left uh, side, a pictogram of, uh, of a female and male. That's the couple. And uh, uh, normally medical data uh, is being taken into consideration during the IVF process, right? Now with uh, the AI abilities, we can also include lifestyle data of the patient as well as partner. Those data then are fed into the fertility platform, which is also collecting data of all other patients that are using the platform and mobile app. So of course the platform is uh, highly secured, so the data is safe. Now, what is going on then later on? The data is then used and uh, provided to the clinician. You can see the arrow on the left side. However, before they go to the clinician, the algorithms, rule-based or um, AI-based or artificial intelligence-based algorithms, are going through the data and provide suggestions to the physician as well as to the patient on what would be the best personalized treatment for that particular patient. So there is no average woman for us. Every single woman is unique, right? And the uniqueness is related to her hormonal profile, medical history, but also lifestyle, um, genetics, and that's the power of AI. That that data, which is vast, enormous, and rich and relevant, can be uh, digested, if I can say, by AI and provide uh, meaningful and uh, important inputs for the for the patient and the physician. Right, and coming back to the patient, the data is then uh, shown to the patient through the patient mobile app and could be shared between the patient, the partner and the physician. And also we believe that every patient or almost every patient would be willing to contribute to also the other patients who will come later on yeah, through the process. So, so of course, provided uh, the patient would, would, would uh, uh, agree and consent, the data can be then used uh, on the platform to train and enrich the algorithm. So, Every patient that comes after you 
is actually also benefiting from your successful or even unsuccessful treatment. So that's the explanation of how AI and facility can work through the platform and the mobile app. Now, if we can move on next, I mentioned that the data is important. So uh, the more relevant data patient provides, the better we can uh, tailor made uh, the, 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 the treatment, right? I say we, but what I mean is algorithms, right? At the same time, it's the suggestion. So the physician at the end is always the last one who makes a decision what should be done. So as you can see, patient and partner data is needed for the algorithm to work well. Then treatment data, yeah? You can see type of treatments, including stimulation protocol, all medical documentation, treatment step and guiding steps are, um, are included in the, in the platform. One of the benefits, for example, of the mobile application is that a patient can store all the medical data uh, related to the fertility on one place. So sometimes patients uh, change clinics, the data comes with you, right? And maybe one, one also interesting point is that uh, we collect data for you uh, with the purpose to make uh, your next treatment better, right? That's important because uh, I don't know whether you know, but about 50% of all the patients have to go through at least two cycles, right? And about 30% of the patients have to go through at least uh, three IVF cycles. So for that reason, uh, storing the data in one place and using it for improving the next, next treatment is important, right? So these are the data types. If we go a little further, we will see some details, right? Personal information, clear. Medical history, we are talking about medications, uh, diseases, vaccinations, vaccination schedule, which we are interested in because then we can relate it to what hormone stimulation you would be, you would be exposed to, right? All the gynecolo gynecolo gynecological history, family history, and also well-being. Now, in terms of uh, uh, well-being, uh, we are making your life a little easier because we are connecting uh, variables to the platform, and I will talk about it uh, a little later on. Right? What's also interesting, as you can see, there are screenshots from the application. Application uh, shows you very clearly the completion of your uh, data, right? And uh, uh, if uh, there is more data needed for some uh, particular uh, insights, we will let you know, right? So you are, and what's also important, you are always in control of your data. As I said, it's all safe. I mean, you can always uh, know what we store, how we store, you can always ask us to, to uh, discontinue storing the data. So that's also a very important part of the, of the, of the platform. Now, if you go to the next uh, uh, slide, this is showing how deep and uh, complete the data collection is, right? You see that when we talk about uh, hormonal profile, we are uh, asking for really mm, detailed information about uh, AMH, um, FSH, LH, and, uh, and their levels, right? If we talk about laboratory tests, again, each test is important, and we will, of course, guide you through the process, what test to choose for what step, right? That's important also to, to, to know that we are guiding you, helping the patient to understand first and also to, to do proper, time, proper uh, things uh, at the proper time. Ultrasound tracking, right? That's for the, for the, that's for the physician, but uh, uh, it's this, the data is uh, uh, also visible and stored for, for the patient. And I can go on, and this is to, to, to show that we are really, really looking at the patient in a very thorough, thorough manner. Why is that? Because if we, if we want to uh, provide our patients with uh, uh, the most appropriate uh, personalized approach, we need the data, right? So, so uh, that's the medical fertility data. If we go further, we can see what I already touched upon a little bit, and that's the lifestyle data. 
you know, that's important because uh, your sleeping cycle is important, right? What you eat is important, right? Um, your activities, your stress levels, these are all factors that can positively as well as negatively influence the outcomes. And this is why we are connecting, as you can see, or a Garmin Fitbit or, or um, Apple Health to the platform so that we can get also, of course, based on the consent, we can get the historical data, right? Because that is also important for the physician to know whether you've changed your lifestyle half a year ago, for example, right? And what was that change, right? So that's, that's the historical data that we can get. And during the, 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 the cycle, I mean, IVF cycle, uh, there are also some, some activities recommended or not recommended. And uh, through uh, these variables, uh, we can give you insights. How, uh, how are you uh, doing, right? And I didn't mention, for example, that uh, through the app, you will be able also to get coaching for, uh, for you know, emotional stress, for example. And we can see the stress based on the lifestyle data through variables. So we are looking at the patient you know, holistically, right? And that's what the patient can see in her um, mobile application. Now, that, that information is then also provided to the physician so that the discussion that the physician and the patient have is about really that concrete, uh, concrete patient about what she's going through, right? So that saves time and makes it very concrete, very concise, and very, very much to the point. So on the, on the right side, you can see what the, what the physician portal uh, looks like. So, uh, so this is the, the lifestyle data combined with medical data in one place. Now, if we look further, all the data is uh, needed for the algorithms to, to work properly, right? So you can see that there are billions of combinations out of the data that uh, we collect about each patient, right? And uh, there is a mutual goal, healthy baby, to go for everybody, right? Healthy life baby. So on the left side, we have patient profiles. There are tens of parameters, as you, have, as you can see, that, um, that uh, we take into consideration from the patient side as well as partner side. And then if we go to the treatment plan, Medications. There are combinations that are working well for some type of patients. There are combinations that would work better for the other types of patients, right? Dosages, personalized dosages. Someone needs higher dosage, someone needs a lower dosage, although dosage can go up depending on, on the development of all sides during the of follicles, sorry, follicles during the during the stimulation, right? Timing optimization is also important when, when to use what medication. So all of these are contributing to the individual stimulation regimen. And our ambition is to make it right for the first time or uh, with uh, one cycle less. Now, right for the first time, what does that mean? Sometimes the algorithms uh, may suggest that it would be better to wait for uh, two or three months and uh, take the washout period if you were on some medications uh, previously, right? Or use... Uh, some uh, pre-treatment options so that once you go for your first cycle or the next cycle, if you had previous cycles, uh, the chances are going to be much higher uh, than without uh, that pre-treatment or washout period, right? So, so this is how the algorithm in a nutshell works. Now, if we go further. One more slide. Yes. There we go, treatment guide. Yes, yes, something very pragmatic. So this is already available. So uh, in the treatment guide, you will see uh, treatment steps that would be tailor-made to your type of the treatment. You can go through IVF, you can go through XC, you can go through in child insemination. So the, the, the mobile application is uh, set up in such a way that the steps will be adjusted accordingly, right? Uh, of course, uh, it's all synchronized with uh, your calendar. So your events uh, will be there visible. You can plan your events, you can add your notes there and uh, you are getting well-being well tips. 
that's currently available. And uh, we're now working on embedding the algorithms uh, for the patients uh, to show uh, recommendations for nutrition, for example, for uh, sleeping. So these are going to be available according to our team uh, in, uh, at the end of the Q3, so September, October. So that's the example of treatment guide, yeah? If we look further, what are the benefits uh, of AI uh, for uh, patients' fertility? So as I, as I mentioned already, your data in one place. It doesn't seem maybe that uh, revolutionary. At the same time, our experience was, and we had to change a clinic, that we were handing our folder our files with us from one clinic to another, and uh, not all the information has been actually kept and stored. So, so that's the matter of completeness and also convenience. Then uh, personalized recommendations based on the data, as I said, lifestyle, nutrition, supplements, that's going to be ready at the end of Q3. And then suggestions uh, for a treatment based on science and similar women who succeed, right? And that we can see through the data. And that's going to be available at the end of the year. Now, uh, practical examples uh, which uh, uh, we can relate to is pinpointing exact ovulation time, right? Through the variables and sensors, yeah, uh, you can see what, would, what, would, what is your exact population time. And we are already discussing partnerships with different providers on that, right? Tips for getting pregnant quickly, right? This is related to the personalized group personalized recommendations, uh, including the fertility self-help. There is a guide, there are tips, tests, blog, and expert opinion is also available, will be available. Right, so, so these are the practical examples and uh, maybe I will ask uh, Professor Nardo to elaborate more on, uh, on these uh, medical aspects where, where AI can, uh, can uh, support patients. Thank you, Jan. Um, in my um, over 20 years experience, the challenge I face as a clinician is trying to consider a um, large data set to then uh, um, optimize my patient's outcomes. Well, I think AI uh, benefit is to the fertility professionals, is the ability to have information that comes from uh, a, a, a generic a standard uh, population. And I can use that uh, information and take into account of uh, my patient's personal data and my patient's previous uh, cycle outcomes and uh, my patient's characteristics to then formulate a um, individualized protocol. The importance of uh, uh, personalized care is to um, determine what works for one patient because what works for one patient may not work for another one and certainly will not work for all of them. And uh, we are developing not just within the fertility sector, but across, the, uh, across medicine, many tools to optimize care. But also what we are developing and what um, Jan has been talking about is the ability of shared decision-making. So help um, women and couples individuals to achieve a successful outcome by enabling choice, by enabling a personalized um, therapeutic approach, by sharing the decision making. And that shared decision making also takes into account of what the chance of success are in the wide population. So which is not just based on what I recommend for a specific patient, but also what many um, thousands of patients within the same um, uh, um, age group or the same of the reserve group have experienced. And uh, I would like to add to what Jan said that uh, it is very important to collect information such as lifestyle, nutrition, um, um, you know, alcohol intake and, uh, and so on and so forth, because as we know, they all contribute to uh, the final outcome. So if we were to know what is the sleep pattern, and then we can correlate that with the response to stimulation. We can correlate that with the, the length of stimulation. Uh, of course, we cannot change um, how many hours somebody sleeps, 
But what we can do, we can recommend um, solutions to help that slick pattern and ultimately help the final outcome of the cycle. So uh, in, uh, I think in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in summary, what AI is going to do is going to shorten the time to pregnancy and is enabling clinicians um, to choose the best option the first time around for patients. Anything you'd like to add, Jan, before we go on to the Q&A? Well, I'm thinking uh, about the, the feedback that uh, we are getting from the patients, specifically those who has experienced failed cycles and who know what uh, it all takes. Uh, they uh, are telling us that uh, it's a pity that this kind of um, approach uh, was not available previously, right? Because uh, uh, one failed cycle is tough, but mm -hmm. two or three or four is really, really difficult emotionally, specifically emotionally. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that no matter how a man loves uh, her, his wife, he can never really feel the pain that she feels when there is a fair time, right? So, uh, so uh, this is, I think, why uh, women are telling us that uh, this is uh, what uh, can help them, you know, to cope with the situation uh, more more easily, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, several failed cycles, there is a very burning question on both sides, patient as well as the physician. What should we do differently? Yeah, yeah. We've tried different protocols. We've tried different things. Is there anything else, right? And when there is an algorithm based on the data, uh, which can analyze other patients, right, and and see whether there are similar ones, why they succeeded, why they didn't succeed, and you know, and maybe a different approach suggested for the physician to take into consideration, right? And the benefit for the patient is that can really then work, and also there is another benefit. For the physician, right? Because, uh, like Luciano said, each physician uh, has uh, a certain amount of time and certain amount of experiences, you know, behind him. And uh, sometimes there is a difficult patient who has never been in front of him. But the good news is, very likely, similar patient or patients have been treated successfully somewhere else, right? So that's, I think, is uh, the power of data and the power of technology to identify in those data where is someone similar mm -hmm. who succeeded and why it's you not. Know? So I think this is what I wanted to, what we wanted to add. Brilliant. Eloise, Eloise if I can actually um, just uh, say something else. I know we've got a question, but Please I just do. would like to... Yeah, that uh, I think generally speaking, with the use of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, physicians and medical professionals um, can leverage the immediate and uh, precise data to expedite, but also to optimize the, um, the care. And, and that is based on uh, um, clinical decision making. So it's much quicker to make a decision when you can access the data, the information quickly. It takes much longer to optimize that when you have to look back into your bag and see what is your personal experience. So I think what AI is going to do, and, and AI has already done this in many other sectors, is just going to generate a more rapid and more realistic um, uh, decision-making process that will ultimately improve um, the outcomes improve uh, their improve their understanding that clinicians, medical professionals, and indeed patients have their cycle, and 
and and the ultra goal is one to reduce the, the, the time to pregnancy as well as reduce cost and reduce stress absolutely um i wanted to ask uh, before we go on to uh, sophie's question and other questions we've had in advance how as a, a specialist how do you see people's data so how would you go about sharing everything that's inputted into the app with your specialist yeah. Sorry, uh, Eloise, but I lost you for a second. Uh, it's more a question for Jan about the app. Um, how, if I, if I was, down, if, say I had inputted all of my data in here and I wanted to share all of my results or my findings or my uh, information with my specialist, um, how do you go about doing that through the LEAF app? Okay, so first of all, uh, you have complete... Uh, uh, control over what data you want to share. So the app guides you through uh, that sharing part. So you choose what data you want to share. If you are asking for expert opinion, we should, we recommend what data you should you should. But still, it's up to you, right? Then there are several different ways. You can either send a PDF report with your data yeah that would be that's available for anybody and you can send it you can you can send it to anybody right then if uh, you want to if you want to uh, share it uh, with a physician who is uh, already on the physician portal uh, he will get your data directly uh, to the physician portal in a structured way so that he can then work with the data, right? So these are the two, the, these are the two basic approaches. Yeah, either, either PDF report or directly to the physician portal uh, once the clinic is uh, on our platform. And we are, we are working now with uh, clinics to, on, to onboard them. Amazing. Um, and uh, Professor Nardo, um, I presume that um, this kind of information as a specialist is really useful to see, for example, prior to a cycle or if, a if you see a patient and they don't have success first time or second time, to be able to see what's happening holistically for the time between cycles. I presume it's great to have this kind of data. I, I think it's, a, it's a, a huge advantage for a clinician to be able to access all the information we collect um, at the, you know, the click of a button. And um, because that will help sometimes to inform the patient on what can be done. Um, in addition to the conventional um, parts of, uh, of, of uh, um, assisted conception. Um, and, and sometimes it's difficult to explain that to patients. Whereas once we got a, a representation of their own phenotype against the phenotype of many other women that may have had a different um, outcome despite being within the same group, age group or image group, I think it's far more tangible, far, 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 you know, far more um, uh, constructive uh, for the patient to, to capture. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to answer Sophie's question, uh, she's downloaded the app. It keeps taking her in circles, filling in data. Is it necessary for photos to be uploaded? Um, she's asking if that's why she's going around in circles with the data. Sophie, no, it is not necessary to photos to be uploaded for to take it further. I, I recommend to uh, uh, send us a, a short email on um, that's office that leads life, I think. And we will respond to you today. Yeah, I'm already discussing with uh, through through the through the web uh, with our technical support. So you will get the answer today. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Um, and um, if anyone is wanting to know more about Leaf, please visit their website um, and download. You can download through Android or Apple, can't you? Um, and is it free to download? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So people should download for free and check it out and, um, you know, see what you can be inputting and doing. Um, 
we are currently right now giving away free fertility testing and a fertility report through LEAF um, up until Thursday of this week. So if you head to fertilityhelphub.com, you will be able to apply for that uh, by downloading their app um, and um, signing up. So please do take advantage of that before Thursday. A couple more questions, um, which are um, a bit more medical, uh, Professor Nardo. Um, are there particular tests that people can do to pinpoint exact ovulation time and not surge? You talked about, Jan, you talked about partnering with wearables and other ovulation devices. Um, Professor Nardo, as a specialist, what's your advice for people who are tracking ovulation at home? I think the, the, the first and more, most important uh, part of a clinical consultation is to establish what is the average length of a menstrual cycle. Because the time of ovulation, uh, in most cases, relates to the length of the, the, the menstrual cycle. So women that have a 28 days menstrual cycle will have a, a, a time of ovulation that is completely different compared to women that have a 35 days menstrual cycle. Hence why it is very important that uh, um, the adequate time for um, testing um, is related to the length of the menstrual cycle. <clears throat> Normally, um, clinically, we would recommend to start testing um, ovulation from around day 10, day 12, but that is for an average 28-day cycle. We know that the second part of the menstrual cycle, uh, which is uh, after ovulation, um, takes about two weeks of the, the menstrual cycle. So if you have a 35 days menstrual cycle, you may ovulate around day 20, day 21. So perhaps you should start testing around day 15. Now, the difficulty that most women have uh, in relation to when to test for ovulation is uh, A, whether the test kit that they're using is sensitive enough. Two, um, when they do start testing. And I think three is uh, also the, um, the ability in some cases to have confirmation post ovulation, mm -hmm. whether they have ovulated or not. Mm -hmm. So the ability to have that confirmation with the progesterone measurement mm -hmm. is uh, very, very important. So it's not just the LH peak or the confirmation of that peak by a home test is also combining that with uh, um, progesterone. And in my clinical experience, if you were to combine the, the surge with the, with the um, progesterone lice, then you have far more information, far more accurate than just one standalone test. Would this kind of information also inform the protocol that you might put patients on in terms of dosages of medication? No, well, uh, not really, because um, we are looking at uh, a progesterone or ovulation as a standard um, marker for an, uh, uh, you know, follicular cycle, whereby there's no um, uh, any ovulation induction. And um, when we stimulate the ovaries um, by giving exogenous gonadotrophins or injectable medications, and um, what we do, we are going to overcome the, um, the natural follicular development, which means patients will no longer have monofollicular ovulation, will not just have a single follicle contributing to that cycle uh, follicular development, will be multiple follicles. And of course, we are going to withhold ovulation because we have to trigger the ovulation in order to prepare the patient for a collection. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the time of um, ovulation and, uh, and uh, the pattern of ovulation is generally not one that is used routinely to tailor the simulation protocol in an IVF cycle. Yeah, makes sense. But instead, instead, perhaps let me just add something that is not directly related to IVF, but to general fertility, that uh, sometimes knowing whether the progesterone um, rise mid-cycle or drops quickly after mid-cycle rise could help to predict the length of the luteal phase, yeah. which per se, per se could be a contributing factor to miscarriage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, yeah, is the app something that people can use if they're not doing IVF? Say they're doing IUI or trying to conceive naturally. Are there aspects of it that would be useful to download and, and uh, record data in advance of those steps or in, instead of having assisted reproduction? Well, yes, because uh, once we have the data prior, the need for the IVF, that is very valuable, right? So yes, definitely, I would recommend to do so, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I presume that it would mean that, say, for example, if a, a patient came to you, uh, Professor Nardo, and had this detail in them, you could possibly look at the data and analyze, analyze and say, it, you could try X naturally um, to see whether that makes a difference prior to starting treatment. Uh, absolutely, that, that makes completely sense. But the one thing we need to make um, clear on this platform um, uh, is that uh, you cannot just look at one test or mm -hmm. one indicator. You need to look at multiple factors. You need to take a good medical history from both partners because, because whilst what you just said makes sense, however, it may not be applicable if there is a, a sperm problem. Yeah. It may not be applicable, applicable if there is a tubal factor problem. Yeah. So people should, um, you know, obviously look at having a physical exam as well as bloods and things like that as well. Of course, and I think this is perhaps the more well, the most one, the most important messages I would like to share with our audience this afternoon, that the use of the of the Leaf platform and the use of any AI tools should not be um, employed, uh, um, you know, as a single tool. Should still be used in conjunction with uh, professional and expert advice. Because otherwise, the you know what we are going to do, we are going to push further that ultimate goal. Because the management of, of the cycle, the management of the um, ovulation, is just um, you know single um, single sided, which is not correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is in conjunction with having specialist support. Yeah, and I think also what um, one thing that I want to stress from what Jan said is that uh, the the platform and AI generally will empower um, uh, individuals, women, couples, and back in treatment on to achieve that goal and making that decision. So it's also providing them with that additional information that may not have uh, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And given it's free to download, why not, right? Why not um, educate yourself? Why not get all the data you can together to share with your specialist and inform what's happening you know, uh, whilst you're on your fertility journey. Um, here are the details, if you can see my screen, um, to follow LEAF on Instagram and also head to their website so that you can then download whichever phone you app for the phone that you have. Um, if anyone has any more questions for Professor Nardo or for Jan, uh, please do DM us or email us afterwards. We'd be happy to help and put you in touch um, or of course go directly. But um, anything else that you think is important to add today? Uh, well, I, I, think, uh, the, I think the final message for me is to um, perhaps use this opportunity to highlight how important is the, the fact that we are developing an ecosystem whereby there are um, IT organizations like LEAF to provide that sort of tool, there are clinicians on the other side to provide expert advice, there are organizations like Fertility Help Up and patient support groups to provide that emotional um, support. So all together we're going to make absolutely absolutely and i know you've just um been doing amazing things Jan, with the team um at the fertility show this weekend uh we were on a stand opposite you so we saw the wonderful support that you're offering people so i highly recommend anyone watching now or watching this back uh to download leaf um and um you know speak to your specialist about what what you can be doing and, and share it with them too so Really, really appreciate both of your th thoughts today and for explaining a bit more about how this works. Thank you very much.